In this example, we have created a control system for the unstable plant G of S. G of S is said to be unstable because one of the poles here has a positive real part. We now want to stabilize the system, and to stabilize the system, we put C, we put G of S in a unit feedback loop with a controller C of S. The question is, can K stabilize this system? Can a certain value of K make this positive pole come to the stable part of the S-plane and make the system stable? And if not, what would be a suitable controller C of S that it would make the system stable? Let's just start by analyzing C of S equals to K. Now, in this case, our closed loop transfer function has a characteristic equation as 1 plus K times 1 S plus 1 S plus 2 S minus 2 equals to 0. This is the traditional root locus equation, and you can now proceed with location of poles and zeros and then find the root locus. One of the poles is located at a positive 2 and the other pole is at negative one. We have two more poles than zeros, which means that n minus m equals to two. And this will give us two asymptotes that will be used to take this pole to infinity. We know how to calculate the angle of those asymptotes for n minus m equals to two. By now we should know that a theta one is 90 degrees and theta two is negative 90 degrees. This is explained in the previous exercises. Where is the centroid of these asymptotes? That's what we call alpha as the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. This is sum of poles negative 1 plus 2 divided by 2. This is equal to 1 over 2 that is positive 0 0.5. The asymptote has a centroid at positive 0 0.5. One of the asymptotes will go up at a 90 degree angle. The other one goes down at a negative 90 degree angle. We can now complete the root locus. We know that the odd count of the poles and zeros is between these two poles. So there, is a, there exists a root locus between them. So these two poles will come together to this point, and one will go up, one will go down. So as k tends to infinity, these two poles come to 0 0.5, they break away, one goes to plus infinity, one goes to negative infinity. Now to the question, can we stabilize the system using a proportional controller? The answer is no, we cannot. This pole what used to be stable. It goes into the unstable region. There is a region here where that, where that pole is stable, but the pole at a positive two, you notice that it will never cross into the stable part. It will always remain with a positive real part. It will come to positive 0 0.5 and go up or down. So this pole here, remains unstable at all times, a proportional controller is not sufficient to stabilize the system. Now let's think about this problem. What is a suitable controller C of S that would make the system stable? To do that, we need to add more zeros to the system, to this side of the plane, so that these poles are attracted to those zeros. This pole will eventually come to that zero, and then the system will become stable. So from this simple analysis, we can see that if we add more zeros here, this pole is not going to plus or minus infinity anymore. We'll have to come to meet that zero. So let's think about a different controller to make the system stable. Okay, let's add more zeros on the stable side of the S-plane to see if we can make this unstable pole come to that zero and then make the closed loop system stable. We can place that zero anywhere. I'm going to place it at negative two. Here, it could be anywhere, but let's see what happens if you place that at negative two. If you add the zero at negative two, now C of S becomes S plus two. And our characteristic equation is now K times S plus two divided by S plus one times S minus one. We now have two poles and one zero, N minus M is one. 
and when n minus m is 1, we know that the asymptote takes an angle of 180 degrees. Where is the root locus now? Well, the root locus exists between these two poles and exists to the left of negative 2. So if we start counting, here we have 0, 1, 2, 3. So anything that is odd has a root locus that is between 2 and negative 1 and to the left of negative 2. So the root locus exists between these two poles. We can draw the initial root locus here. And exists to the right and exists to the left of negative 2. Remember that our asymptote has an angle of 180 degrees. So here it is, 180 degrees. That's the asymptote that will take one of the poles to negative infinity. So what is happening? These two poles will come together. One of them will have to come to the zero. And the other one will use the asymptote. So the other one needs to go to negative infinity. These poles cannot cross into this part between negative 2 and negative 1 because that's, uh, th there is no root locus in there. So the poles here will come together somewhere will jump to the, the negative side of the real axis. They'll come together there. One goes up, one goes down. They travel this way. One goes to the zero, and one goes to negative infinity. That's the one that uses the asymptote at 180 degrees. Now, is this system stable? Well, it depends on the value of k. The system may be stable or not. Up to this point here, if we call this value of k, say k here is 0, let's assume that at this point where these two poles meet, we have k equals to k1. Here, when they cross the imaginary axis, let's assume that the value of k that brings the poles there is k equals to k2. And let's assume here that when the pole becomes the poles become critically damped or the same, let's call this value k3. So if k is greater than 0 and smaller than k2, the system is unstable. k1 doesn't matter because k1 is also unstable. So so long as k is between k2 and 0, we are, this pole is between this pole always has a positive real part, and the system is unstable. When k equals to k2, the system is marginally stable. And now for k between k2 and k3, which corresponds to this part of the root locus up to this point, from this point, the system is underdamped. Because if you put, place a pole anywhere here along this root locus, the pole will have complex conjugate numbers that characterizes a underdamped system. When k equals to k3, this is a critically damped system. And for k greater than k3, the system becomes overdamped. So the system is not always stable, but it can be stabilized for a given range of k. And that was the objective of this exercise.